go. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Donna Reed with Keller Williams in Southern Arizona, and I am here today with her brother, Eric Seaman, and I'm with Keller Williams Heritage in San Antonio, Texas. And we are here working on our podcast, Real Siblings, It Ain't Easy, where we're spending a little bit of time talking about the home that we grew up in in Ohio, in a small town in Ohio, and then doing some comparing and contrasting to where we live and work in real estate right now. Me in Tucson, Eric already mentioned he's in San Antonio. And so we. this is our fourth one. I promise I'm not going to keep telling you which episode it is every time, but each time we're trying to improve a little bit and learn of it a little bit. So Eric, what did we do the last time? Well, last time we talked about a lot about the exterior of our 1868 home in Lindsay. Uh, I call it a second empire, but we did, we spent a lot of time talking about the fact that it kind of had an unusual structure in that stability and exterior surface was all brick. Uh, it wasn't a facade. And during that conversation, we also talked about materials in your area, my area that were used like adobe or slump block or limestone, the, like the San Antonio missions were all built with limestone as the structural material. Uh, so before we go into exterior, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the interior, the structure of the walls, and that means framing. How exciting. So <laughs> I, you know, I, I, it's just part of me. I'm a bit of a history guy. So looking up some information and it's like, okay, who knew these numbers just kind of get me. So 1945, what was ending? War. World War II. That's correct. And so as part of that, we had a post-war housing boom coming on. Right. So specific on that. They estimate that there were roughly 15 million returning GIs from all over the world coming back to the United States. Demand was up and the government had created some new financing options in the form of the GI Bill and more economical FHA loans. So demand was up, financing was available. We had a massive expansion and the construction market exploded. What does that mean? They figure in eight years, just in GI Bill homes, 2.4 million homes in eight years were built and completed. Eight years, 2,920 days, that is 822 homes finished every day. I wonder how many of them, Eric, were those Sears Roebuck homes? Well, the, you know what? They, they were Sears Roebuck and they were all very, very generic. It was the same yeah. house. It was, I mean, you could see that's when the suburbs yeah. came into. Yeah. But in order to do that, they went into uh, what we refer to now as SPF Wood. Have you ever heard that term before? I've heard it. I couldn't tell you what it means. Right. That is soft wood and it stands um, for spruce. Pine, Pine fir, fir, SPF. So if you go into a Lowe's, a Home Depot, or any other lumber yard, and you get to the SPF section, that's the framing material. Two, right. two inches by four, six, eight, 10, whatever, that's SPF. And, and we used course, to always say two by four, right? We always said two by fours, and I don't even know if they really were, and two by sixes, are they really two by sixes? Like, <clears throat> Well, you know, technically... They started, they have what they call the nominal measurement, which is what it's called, a two by four. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> the wood process, they used to cut them at two by four and then the wood shrank. Okay. During the drying process. Now we kiln dry it. So we force it to dry and force that yes. shrinking. And now since wood does not shrink uniformly and they measure the amount of moisture in the wood, not how much it's reduced in size. Then they yeah. plan it and hone it and come up with what we consider to be a standard size now, which is one and a half by three and a half is actually the dimension of a two by four. It's just like, it's just like the garages that they say are 20 feet that are really 19 feet, six inches or, or whatever. So, yep. all right. Or a 60 inch TV, which is only 55 inches. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't quite understand. It doesn't go with the math that we learned in elementary school. That's all I'm saying. So that's just <laughs> a little bit about what we do to get to the frame of the house. And yeah. I'll, I'll turn yeah. it over to you to talk about what do they do yeah. out in Tucson on the exterior walls? Yeah. So, you know, I have to tell you all, when I first moved to Tucson, coming from Lindsay, where I had been in 
four homes that were brick or, or I didn't even know how they were built, right? And, and then I came here and I get into real estate and my husband and I bought a new build. So we were around the corner and we watched it being built. And I saw two by fours or two by sixes, which with what looked like a piece of styrofoam and chicken wire over it. And I literally, I've told Eric, it reminds me of like the three little pigs and certainly somebody was gonna blow down this house. I had no idea how that could stay standing and be a house. It just didn't make any sense to me. So, um, and then the stucco goes up and you're like, oh, okay, now there's stucco here and they've been building here for a long time. So clearly they must know what they're doing, right? So frame stucco, a big thing. However, stucco is ancient. You know, it was used in um, Greece and in Rome and it's a combination of, and Native Americans used it, you know, it's a combination of concrete or cement and sand and lime, um, a powdered lime. And it can be, you know, weather resistant. It can be color added. You can paint it afterwards. There's different ways that it's applied. What's interesting to me is in um, some of the learning that we are doing for these <laughs> podcasts is that that first coat that goes over the chicken wire, which may or may not be real chicken wire. It's I'm not real chicken it. wire. Yeah, I'm calling it that because that's what it looks like. Because that's me, what right? it looks like to us. Yeah. And of course, yeah. you have to have some farm experience to understand what to chicken understand wire what even is. chicken wire is. That's correct. So the first coat's three eighths of an inch. And that's where they they really adhere the stucco to that wire and to the what's underneath the, um, that's underneath. And then the next coat's three eighths of an inch. And the next coat is one eighth of an inch. So seven eighths of an inch is kind of a standard stucco going over a wood frame home. And Do you know how much in anything you looked at? Did you see how much time has to be between those layers to dry? You know did they put I it on and look, a day dry, two dry? Do you know? You know what? I don't. I didn't look at that, and that's an interesting question because again, here we are in the desert. Was it dry in a day, or was it dry in a week? Or you they know, take time to cure, and yeah. they have to give time and. You as right. the, the anxious new homeowner are watching it going, why isn't anybody working on my house? Yeah. Yeah. What are they doing because. today? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, so then typically out here, uh, the, the homes get painted. The, the color isn't always worked into the stucco. And it, it's kind of a joke with my siblings, none of who live in the desert, that the colors are various shades of tan. You can get tan one, two, or three with trim that is tan one, two, or three. And if you go to a different color, part of the reason that it happens is because the sun is so strong in the desert Southwest that if your house is painted red or purple or many of, frankly, the Native American colors. Purple? That, I have never seen a purple house out in Tucson. Yes, there are purple houses here. You we went to that one that was kind of lime green that one time or yeah, a real pale yeah. green that was that I thought was fantastic. But right. But when people come in towards they, green, you know, they, they fly in for, you know, they get it they're, they're here for the first time and they're coming from where it's all green and, you know, uh, siding or whatever it is. And all of a sudden they see tan, 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 tan. And then what the difference is, is what the front looks like, right? The, the elevation. Um, but part of that reason is, is because as our tans fade, well, it sounds like I'm talking now about being in a suntan, right? As our tans fade with the Western sun, so we can do spray on tanner on the houses. You can just spray. That's it. That <laughs> spray on tanner. It's just not near as obvious, right? We know that um, it's not as obvious. Whereas if you've painted it red or deep green, and there are still some builders that do that. And if you look at my painting behind me, if you're watching this, you can tell I like color. I do a lot of things with color, but it also is more expensive to my yeah. neutral walls. Yeah, Eric doesn't like color either. I'm sure understand. if you're listening on this, you're you can't see the video. You can check out the YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, I've learned a lot about stucco and how durable it is. And then the last thing that I want to say that um, Eric and I were just talking this morning is we talked about the weight. He did the math last time on our last episode about how much he thinks that house in Lindsay weighed with three layers and all the stuff and not counting mortar, right? So. What's a normal or a logical weight? Well, apparently there is um, there is a place at the seven eighths of an inch where that's exactly where it should be from a durability perspective. And if it gets too much more, then it could be too heavy for the supporting walls. And if it's too much less, kind of chintzy. So we need to be careful with who we use, right? To do the work so that they know what they're doing. <laughs> Professionals, higher licensed people. And then there's this whole other thing about a, now a synthetic stucco. 
which has got to be a whole nother episode, you know, about this, but that's sort of my, my stucco information and it can last for years. It will crack. I will tell you, it will crack um, as it dries out here. It's not usually a big deal. Again, people moving here sometimes are a little like, ah, the walls all cracked. What does that mean? Well, as long as it's not under a window where it looks like the window is going to fall out, then usually we're in pretty good shape. So there you go. Well, and do they do anything to accent with it? You know, last time we talked about the fact that the houses here in San Antonio have limestone and brick combination, something to go with. And commonly in my part of the world, uh, when you do stucco, the whole home is in stucco. And if it is, it's generally considered a luxury property. And in San Antonio, even with that's the crazy increases in the market, uh, that means a house that's selling for a half million dollars or more. And really, yeah, huh. you put. Uh, I mean, some parts of this the country, you have to be, be the seven hundred fifty thousand is that threshold. Wow. And even as I say, even as crazy as the market has been for the last two years, that hasn't changed. But even if it's got stucco on it, typically the whole house isn't stucco. It's got some sort of additional accent here in San Antonio that's got a, a lower brick facade, a half wall, maybe limestone, limestone accents on the columns, something like that. Do they do that in Tucson? That, that's, that's what the developers are doing to make the elevations different. You know, you can have rock, brick, um, sandstone, flagstone cut that would decorate the front of a house. And again, just it's just the look. It's not. Oh, you know, did you like, mention another stone? I flag did. Stone? Flagstone. I looked at my fireplace and I was like, oh, there's flagstone on my fireplace. Yeah, but so, do you use flagstone outside? Are they actually putting oh, yeah. it on the wall, not just on the. It's, it's on the fireplace. It's cut flagstone and it's different sizes and shapes. Maybe sometime when we have our website, we'll get a picture of my fireplace so you can see the flagstone used inside and outside. But it's. Um, Oh, dang, Eric, I just, you just got me off. I totally Okay, and it. you just, uh, what about uh, wood accents? Do you guys Those, do anything that looks like it has a wood accent? Yes, yes. The so the traditional Santa Fe Southwestern style homes as compared to a contemporary would absolutely have wood. And they might be the lentils over the, um, the lentils over the windows. Those <laughs> lentils. are- Lentils are cooked those, right? right? And you you eat them with like <laughs> kind of like a curry or a, some sort of yeah. spice to it with your lentils. Exactly. Oh and, my gosh, and, we've and, got and... so much to cover. <laughs> Return to a cooking show because you and I both like to cook. So, so there's the the beams also that are exposed and the beams in the ceiling and the difference between the Midwest and the Southwest again is we watch wood expand back east and out here we watch it get smaller and tighter and rot. So again, sometimes those people can buy a million dollar house and those pieces, you can stick a pen or a pencil in them because the wood has rotted. So, so yeah. if, if you have wood that you see on the outside, and again, yeah. I'm thinking you said that's Santa Fe style, I'd say it's yeah. Adobe colonial yeah. mission yeah. style. Does that yeah. actually go through and be one beam that goes in and becomes the interior on the house or are they faux on the outside and don't really? Either way, it can go either way. So the beams could go back in the day all the way through the home and they would be the same one. Others are strictly on the outside. And um, am I pointing like off the screen? You can't No, see no, no, you're not pointing. To, I, I'm doing it. Is it because of money? Because I got to think that if you try to take a big, long no, but, wood... Uh, well, okay. yeah, of course. It, it costs a lot of money. Just even my beams, which you can't see, maybe sometime I'll show. That goes I can across. see that beautiful corbel. You can see that beautiful corbel. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> um, but the beam that I have is probably uh, eight inches across, 10 or 12 inches deep, and goes all the way across the top of my house. So 20, 20 to 24 feet. That's a big beam. That's a big piece. And, of and you're only in a townhome. You're in a relatively yeah. small space. Uh, right. Right. Compared so, to some of the luxury places I've been into house. out there. Yeah. 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 So a lot of things related to stucco and decoration. And you're right. So, and the price definitely goes up, just like everything. One solid piece. Think about building a log cabin, right? That's another whole thing. You know, we have a brother that lives in a log cabin. So yeah. That's probably all anybody ever wanted to know about stucco. 
<laughs> I don't think that it probably is. You talked about the fact that you've got the synthetic stucco and yeah. the difference between real, ma real masonry and synthetic stucco. And, yeah. you know, we haven't even scratched the surface. We, we, and again, we talked about the fact that there's wood, there's asbestos, there was an era where it was asbestos shingle. Yep. Then houses started getting uh, aluminum siding and then aluminum went out because vinyl was improved and we put vinyl siding on and you've got the stucco. Now you've got cement fiber, which are commonly referred to by the primary manufacturer, Hardy. Yeah. Uh, and all of that comes into play that part of it. And I, I had mentioned to you that here in our area, MLS, if you put brick on the front and three sides as cement fiberboard, the whole house is considered to be four sides masonry, which oh, is something that we, we as real estate agents post in our multiple listing services, what the exterior is. And well, I can say four sides masonry if I have cement fiber. Just like we can say two by fours if they're not two by fours. That's it, exactly. Are you trying to say that cement fiber may... Wow. And, okay. We're, yeah. yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, just, it's interesting. I have a listing coming up um, actually next week and on the outside it's stucco, right? But it's stucco over block. So that's a whole nother way to attach and surface. The stucco can go over to so many things. So, well, in that way, it was more traditionally anyhow, if you did the block, you, if yes. you did just that you put the, the stucco finish over top of that over the top Adobe of your slump block. Yeah. Or strong Yep. Lines. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of stucco. <laughs> <laughs> so, and we're going to talk more about this, you guys, in the future, right? Here, we talked about that episode yeah, we, 25 or 30 or something. <laughs> as, as Donna and I have prepared for this and developed this concept, we realized, again, just in some of the stuff we mentioned now, that there are a plethora of additional things that we can discuss, mention, and dive deeper into future shows. But we also recognize the fact that we may not be the best for that. And we're committing to you, listeners, audience, to bring industry experts. And I was excited. I had somebody this week going, hey, if you're going to do guests and interviews, I want to talk to you about this. And that's just a little teaser, something coming up, because the story just was so cool based on our only three episodes. And when we do that, we're going to try to do a, a deep dive. You know, we're committing the, on these to try to keep them to around 20 minutes. And when we do a deep dive, that's probably going to be a longer episode, 45 minutes or more, if we've got somebody in that we're interviewing. Um, and so I guess the, anything else? If not, we can wrap this one up. Well, you and I talked about um, letting people know when we're going to release them and why we're going to release them. Oh, that's right. Okay. So uh, the first ones were kind of haphazard. The last episode came out on the 16th. Uh, this one is coming out on the 28th. And the reason we picked the 16th and the 28th, we are committing to publishing or syndicating these uh, twice a month. The 16th happens to coincide with my birth date of June 16th. The 28th coincides with Donna's birth date of 628. Yes, we are both June babies. And so we're using those dates, uh, planning so to do two remember. episodes a month, and it'll be the 16th and the 28th. And then let's be honest about this. We're recording this one in advance. And today happens to be July 21st, which is Dan's birthday. Our oldest brother's birthday. He is 66. Six. Yeah, yeah, a year on Medicare now. So yeah. happy birthday. We're going to tell him that we did the shout out and he's going to have to listen whether he wants That's to or right. not. right, and it's course, all the, the way towards if, the end. If you were there the first episode, you know that we recorded at his house and he actually had the audacity to interrupt in the middle of the show. <laughs> I think it's amusing that you just said Audacity since that's the software that we're using too. That's one of the softwares that we're using. <laughs> but you also, with your with your movie re reference in your Facebook post earlier, I had yeah. to go with plethora. And there are individuals who know exactly what I'm talking about saying there are a plethora of materials. <laughs> there you go. There you go. What a riot. All right. So we want to thank everybody for listening and joining us again on this stroll down our memory lane as we reminisce and reflect on how life in our small town of Lindsay impacted our lives and careers in real estate. 
As we wrap this up, up this episode, please keep in mind our goal is to communicate, educate, and connect with you, our listeners, and our audience. If you're in Tucson or San Antonio, we are here to help you find your perfect home for your family to call oh, home and home. Man, did I mess that up. Call your house a home. <laughs> Create your own lasting memories. If you're across the United States or around the globe, we are both part of extensive networks of professional real estate advisors and would be happy to connect you. Remember, it may be simple, but it ain't always easy. And until next time, this is Eric. And I'm Donna. And we are Real Real Siblings. Siblings. Bye, everybody.